Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the greatest podcast this side of Mars. Um, <laughs> I'm not so sure about the other side, I can't confirm, but definitely on this side, we've got a down pat. For sure, you know, for sure. I'm here with the lovely Mr. Neasy. Always here, always ready, you know. And you know who I am, Miss Femi. This is the Uncovered Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. With Nick and Femi. With Nick and Femi, Femi. we are Nick and Femi, you know. Um, (laughs) You know, depending on when you listen to this. um, What what, what would change? It would be a few few episodes in. So you would have listened to us a few times and gotten used to the structure and understand how we're doing our thing right now. I hear that, I hear that. Yeah, thanks, Nick. No, you're Um, welcome. (laughs) (laughs) But we're here with two very special guests. We've never had two guests before. Mm. One is incredibly famous well known in the industry blue tick verified <laughs> well um, you know what it's verified it's legit you know you near the moon <laughs> another one as well <laughs> you know we've got the awesome radio presenter tv personality host host with the most former amazing race star as uh-huh. well mm-hmm. didn't do as good as us but as well. Wait, what as did well. you come? Don't worry about it. Don't that. worry. I think, I think we did better. Uh, what did I you don't do? think we did so. 10 legs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> now we got the lovely Miss Mel Greg. Is it Miss Greg or Greg? I don't know. I actually don't know. <laughs> Go with whatever feels right. <laughs> the lovely Miss Mel Greg here. How are you? Yeah, good. This is a lot of fun. Good on you guys for doing this as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We're really we're excited to be here. I think this is a very exciting one, yeah. honestly. Oh, look, it's been a while since there's been two men sitting on my couch with me, so I'm excited <laughs> too. <laughs> I'm glad. the same. <laughs> On. <laughs> but we've also got a very special guest here, and this is my favourite guest I've had so far. No offence, Mel. No. <laughs> Miss Mia. No, look at her. She's like, oh, give me attention now. Oh, yes. This is your time to shine, Mia. <laughs> so Mia's her little dog. What type of dog is it? She's a moodle, so she's half Maltese, half toy poodle. Um, and she is my absolute life. She's my little fur baby. Did they get any bigger than that, or was that the max size? Yeah, that's how big she gets. She's that's beautiful. It. She's literally it's... the size of my hand. Um, <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> <laughs> I think like, just Kobe Bryant. <laughs> <laughs> like, listen to an audio, can be whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm seven foot, by the way. <laughs> no, honestly, like this is going to be a very exciting podcast for multiple reasons. We have a very awesome icebreaker, as you can see. Mm-hmm. If you listen to an audio, you can't see. <laughs> <laughs> so go on our YouTube channel and watch it. Uh, so we've got a very special icebreaker, which we do with every guest. Every guest icebreaker is def- completely different. Yeah. This one is fun and exciting. So what made you choose this one for today then? Because, you know, you're very, on TV, on The Amazing Race, you came off a bit feisty. (laughs) 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 So we thought, what better to do? A little bit of a spicy little chicken wing challenge, you Mm. know? So Nick, do you want to explain the the rules of of what she's about to undergo? From what I I need to accept it first. Do you accept it? What, What is it? What do I have to do? Well, you didn't well, no. I would have told you. <laughs> so this is roulette, yeah? This is roulette. This is roulette. So this is what we call, we have a name for every single one of our challenges. Yeah. Super they're all, creative. They're all made up on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> this is roulette with Nick and Femi. <laughs> Chicken, wing roulette. Wing roulette. This is wing roulette. Okay. Right. And pretty much what's going to happen is that um, we're going to go through a series of questions. Wow, okay, well, I don't so know. that's what's going to happen. All I know now. is that Mel's going to eat some wings. That's as much as I can tell you. <laughs> We're going to ask you a series of, of questions that are related to things that you should know, right? Mm. You're in the media, you're in the industry, you should know pop culture. Yeah, right? yeah. So we're going to ask you some pop culture questions, and if you get them wrong, you do a roulette of wings. So you have three wings. Two of them are extremely spicy. Oh. One of them, not so much. I'm so, allergic to spice. That's not true. We double checked before we came mm. here. We got dietitians on our team. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's All right. basically what we're going to do. We're going to ask the questions. If you get them right, then sweet. We move on. You can have a sip of wine. And then... I'm going to have a sip of wine anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you get them wrong. It's it's roulette. All right. So here we are. These are some questions you can ask. Uh, you it's can cool. ask the How beautiful. This is what I'd love to hear. Ooh, okay. I like this one. Let's start it off. So, who is the oldest of the Kardashian sisters? Kim. Uh-uh. Chloe! Uh-uh. Oh, Come on! Come on! I actually thought 
this was like, uh, let's ease easy, you into it. <laughs> 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 any girl between the age of 12 to 40 right now is just upset at you right now. <laughs> <laughs> is it Chloe's the oldest one? No. What, Courtney, the it's other one? It's Courtney, the relevant one. How do you guys even know this, well, we though? we have the answer. <laughs> 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 no, so, yeah, no, Courtney. But I like Courtney. Courtney's low key my favorite. Though. Is she? Yeah, because yeah, she's. Oh, she simple. doesn't do anything, man. That's isn't why. It? I like her. Anyway. Yeah, anyway. You know. So does that mean I have to eat one of them? You can, you can pick one, and you can you can decide to. Eat them. You can decide to eat them later, but just pick which one. Oh, no, I can she, choose oh, to eat no, it later. No, she has to eat it now. What are you talking about? You oh, have to eat see, it now. I well, the one to... that doesn't have all the spicy sauce on. No, it. you can't pick that one. Well, you That is incredible. No. Why are these cold? Amen. Can you at least serve warm food if you're going to do this? If we were sponsored, we'd have to <laughs> <laughs> the burgers. Wow, the way you're picking it is like... <laughs> do you want some? How is it? Just overreact. I don't think it's spicy. I think I got the well, good one, didn't you, I? Well, you picked that one on purpose. <laughs> 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 you literally saw. Let's get the one, one with less sauce. sauce. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yum. Good. Good. All right. I'll leave that properly later. Those are yours. Gift from us. Is this your sponsor here? Do you want me to hold that up to yes. the camera for yes. you? So ribs and burgers in <laughs> stand <laughs> at any time. But well, we're not limited to just ribs and burgers. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next one. Let's go. All right, all right. I have no idea what that even says. All right, so I'm going to ask it. <laughs> <laughs> The character Jar Jar Binks first appears in which of the Star Wars movies? I don't do Star Wars is for nerd, for nerds. For I don't nerds. do I don't do Star Wars. <laughs> I, don't, I have no idea. I've never watched a single thing of Star Wars. Yeah, I didn't even know. No, I didn't know. Let's Isn't there on. a hairy thing? That's the only one I know. It was like Chewbacca. Chewbacca, yeah. Chewbacca's yeah. a man. All right, we'll move on because yeah, no one knows. Yeah, that. I don't know. I, don't yeah. know. I know there's gonna be a lot of people listening to this like, oh, how do you not know Star Wars? I know. Like, Come yeah. on, how Instant do you know Instant hatred Star Wars? from your fans. <laughs> <laughs> I love Star Wars. Ah, right, cool. Who won the 2016 Grammy for Album of the Year with the album 1989? Taylor Swift. Oh! Ooh. How do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought there was no way now. <laughs> Wait, does that mean one of you has to eat the spicy now? No. Yeah, because they, yeah. no, that doesn't mean that. Yeah, you said roulette. Roulette means it's take it in turns. Oh. That means someone has to eat one of the spices. You really didn't go through the instructions at all. <laughs> Read the clue. Alright, last question. I will. Last question. I will for you. I will for you. I promise. I pick I this one I, for you. I, I... <laughs> stitched off. No, stitched. Can I get eat back it. to it? No, no, eat it now, me. <sighs> wow, this is the first time this has ever happened on one of my game shows. <laughs> I'm ended up doing it. Oh, Don't get it on your shirt. These are really cold. Do you need a bib? Come on, ribs and burgers. Hey. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm happy. <laughs> Which one was that? Oh my god. Have we ever racked on camera? Yeah. <gasps> <laughs> 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 Here, have a listen, gin. For those that are listening, it's hot. <laughs> uh, no, quench your first with some Vickers London Drive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was alright. I was going to say, I hope we get this one. I hope we get this one. I hope we get, yeah, I hope you get this Which. That's a hard one. I hope she gets this one wrong. Which member of the boy band One Direction left the band in March of 2015? As in the first one to leave? I can't tell you. Zane. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone knew that was Freddie. Yeah! Yeah! No, I, yeah. I thought it was Harry. Was the to leave. I thought it was Zane. Zane was the first one to be like, but I'm better than this. <laughs> they said he was. They hit him with the pillow talk. <laughs> <laughs> hit him with the pillow talk. Uh, Enjoy your spicy. You got the spiciest uh, one. Wings. No, I got the spiciest one. <laughs> Wait, so did I end up with a non spicy one? Yeah, that's what I'm no, telling you. She can't This has backfired a little bit, hasn't it? No, this really backfired. This backfired. <laughs> Anyone that knows how to actually organize game shows? Like, no, get us send, send me a DM on Instagram. <laughs> send me your fired. <laughs> oh, feel... Nah, you know what? Vickers don't spot me. I can't even open this. I broke it. <laughs> I'm going to sip it like this now. That was really yuck. Like... <laughs> um, we it's thank like... you very much to your sponsor. What are they called? <laughs> <laughs> For the ribs, ribs that you've just called a yuck. No, the sauce. The sauce. <laughs> tomato sauce. First of all, who even eats tomato sauce? Obviously, I know some people. 
Robert, obviously, Robert, obviously Robert does the farmer that created that. Robert, do you have any napkins, Nick? <laughs> That's right. Oh, whoa, that really backfired. This is obviously not making the edit. Um, <laughs> after another failed uh, <laughs> game show attempt, maybe we'll get it in season three or so. <laughs> now we are locked in to the juice and the meat of the podcast. Is that actually a segment? No, no, no. Oh. no, no I'm just talking. Because I didn't know where that was going to go. <laughs> 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 it doesn't see her face right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, so we, this is when we get to know you. We talk to you. We get, like, your kind of advice. And we obviously talk as well. The first one we want to talk about is, like, when you were 16, you went on, like, a little bit of a journey of self-discovery and understanding that kind of process. So... Mm. What was that journey like? Like, was it good? Was it bad? Did you regret it? Do you think that it shaped you to who you are? Like, and what was that journey, actually? What did yeah. it look like? I love that you've done it so politely. I was basically a shithead runaway teen that night. <laughs> 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 so, um, I was born and raised on the farm where you have the freedom to do anything. It doesn't matter about brand names. It doesn't matter about status of how cool you are at school. Like, there's zero fucks on the farm. And then when we moved to the big city, um, mum and dad wrapped me in cotton wool. I wasn't allowed to walk down the street by myself. I wasn't allowed to do anything. So I completely rebelled, had a really hard time at school with um, bullying as well and just not being able to fit in. And I was a really creative kid and I was A grades and, you know, I, had, I got good grades. Um, but I ran away from home, left school at 16, hung out with the wrong people. And it was actually radio that was my saving grace when I was 17, I started volunteering. And I'm like, is this real? Is this a mm. job? Um, and that started my radio journey from there. And um, I really did discover who I was and started making smarter choices in life. Yeah. I find it very interesting because obviously like not a lot of teenage girls that go like, you know what? I'm just gonna go on like a, a self-discovery journey. I'm just gonna piss off. Mm. How did your friends and people around you take that? Yeah, the, the, it was tough for the family mm. because they just wouldn't give me an inch. So I'd take a mile each time. Mm. I'm like, okay, well let me hang out with my friends. Let me go to the parties. And it was always no, no, no. So uh, I needed to do it. Um, for me, there was no other option. I needed to find who I was and I did. I don't recommend it. You should stay with you. <laughs> it wasn't funsies, you know, stick with your friends, stick with your family. And because my friends were the wrong people, it was fine that I moved away right. from that group. Right. So like, like you said, you were saying that we kind of like, we said it in a nicer way than what it really was. Like, what was the hard parts of this journey, right? Because obviously if you, if you don't think it's this... You know, this was beautiful. Oh, so <laughs> yeah. flowers, petals, and yeah, like, no, it wasn't was, like that. What was it like? Like, did you battle with drugs? Did you like experiment lots of stuff? Like, yeah. did you go into a lot of like, what was the actual journey like? Yeah, look, stealing from work, right. which I'm ashamed of as well. Taking drugs, hanging out with absolute scumbags. Mm. You know, the lowest scum that you can imagine, and right. those were the people that were embracing me. Mm -hmm. So you kind of find yourself, and at 16, you don't have the strength or the resilience. You know, you're very easily influenced by other people. Yeah. And I was. I was influenced by them. And it was literally radio that took me away from that. So I'm grateful for, for that. How did you find that radio was going to, like, how did you realise that radio was going to be your saving grace? Like, how did that kind of work? Because I was being me. Like I was going to mm. a job, which wasn't a job, it was a volunteer, but I was being completely me. Yeah. You know, your whole personality, your whole emotions, your feelings, everything, <clears throat> you're 200% yourself. Yeah. yeah. So that's what captured me. Yeah. That is very, very powerful what you just said though. You might not even realize it, but people are constantly dissatisfied and mm. having that kind of like inner turmoil because they're not being authentic to themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're not actually doing things that are giving them value or giving them strength or giving them the ability to actually be truly 200% themselves. Yeah. Yep. And eventually, I always go through the belief that unless you're actually yourself voluntarily, you'll be put into a situation that will make you become yourself, which mm -hmm. might not always be pleasant. Mm -hmm. And That's that might right. be a tough situation. There might be someone hurting you or whatever it is, or mm -hmm. you like quitting your job, but you will always be forced to be yourself. So it's always better to find that journey voluntarily than mm. forced yeah. into it. I've kept that motto my whole life, even through the absolute hell that I've been through in my life. The one thing I've always lived by, be true to yourself and you'll never have any regrets. Yeah. Mm. As long as you're not ever trying to be someone else or do something to please someone else, as long as you're always making your own decisions and staying true to who you are, you'll get through it all. Yeah. Mm. That's awesome. 
So you get into you get into radio, mm. and then boom, ten months into the role, we had this. What do we like to term? I think it was the. I think they've now termed it as the. the oh, royal, you talking about the royal prank call? The royal yeah, prank call. Yeah. Ten months into your dream role, you find was it straight away? Like as soon as you got into a volunteer work, you then. No. So the volunteer work was when I was sixteen, seventeen. I fought for fifteen years in oh, radio to right. get my dream job, oh, which was the wow. Hot Thirty Countdown. You guys might be too young, but when no, Kyla no, no, did you... No, 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 remember, we were <laughs> Every kid in Australia listened to it. And I remember when I was going through my troubling times as a 16-year-old, I'd sit there and listen to Kyle and Jackie O on the Hot 30 Countdown. And not for a second did I ever think I would have that job. So when I got that job, the, one of the biggest Wait, shows in your, Australia... Was yours the actual Hot 30 Countdown? It wasn't like a... Thanks for doing your research. <laughs> Do not allow you to punch it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to give you a bit more of a front. <laughs> Just so you Tough know, crowd. <laughs> she was on the legit top, like hot thirty. Yeah, countries. it like, was. It had the heritage. Yeah, it, by far. Yeah, everyone knew of the show. It had been successful for, I think it was twenty, thirty years at that point. Mm -hmm. So when I got to do that job, like you're up here, you're like, this is amazing, dreams come true. You're living in penthouses, you're driving fancy cars, you're hanging out with all the celebrities living in penthouses. Like, it is everything you could imagine that it would be like. So I did, I had that for 10 months. And then, yeah, the, the royal prank call happened, which was, we made a prank call when the Duchess of Cambridge was uh, admitted for morning sickness. And we impersonated the, the Queen and Prince Charles. And unfortunately, the nurse put us through to the private nurse. We didn't expect that to happen. We thought we'd be hung up on legit. That's and it's the Hot Thirty countdown. It is a fun, silly show. Mm. We're not after serious storylines and headlines and information. It was never about that. Yeah. But that's what happened. Right. It was approved. It played, and we all know what happened next. Yeah. So I mean, at the time, I didn't even care that I'd lost my job, the one that I'd fought so hard for and had dreamt of for so long. It was more going through the guilt and the mental health issues. Uh, it took a few years to recover from that. Mm. And what were the mental health implications after that? Well, I was a normal, happy girl, and then I went into a deep depression, committing, like thinking about contemplating suicide. Like you can go from being normal to being at the absolute rock bottom like that through a tragic event, through trauma, through something, it can happen to anybody. And it's scary because you have no control over it. Yeah. That's it, man. Like that's the fragility of our, of our mental health. Yeah. And with that whole, prank, that whole prank or that whole scenario, right? It was a very public thing for you yeah. as well. Mm, yeah. That would, I would assume, would make it so much harder because you can't even go through your own kind of inner dialogue. Mm. It's, it's in front of a camera. And you yeah. had a lot of segments. And I remember growing up, I remember like watching it and you're on 60 Minutes, Current Affair, like everything, that was like yeah. the biggest thing. So mm. was it harder to deal with it when you've got the whole world watching you? Or do you think that it was the same? For me, I didn't care for a long time. So it was just, here's a new headline, here's a new story, here's my face on the front page of another paper around the world. I still didn't care mm. that, about that process. The guilt was driving me. So. Right. All I was thinking about when that was happening was how can I help the Saldana family? What can I do to try and help them? It was never about how am I going to deal with this? How am I going to move forward? That comes a year after mm -hmm. of going through all of that first. And it, people think, oh, yeah, there's a few news stories. We had a bodyguard for three months and I didn't see sunlight for three months. We oh, had yeah. bullets with our names on it sent to police stations. We had, um, we had to have bodyguards all the time. I couldn't have connection with the outside world. So I was isolated reading all of these trolling comments while I'm researching the Saldana family. And you start to believe what these people are saying to you. Go kill yourself. Like, you deserve mm -hmm. to die. Um, it's a very dark space to be in. How long was, were they actually, these death, threat, these death threats actually? Two gone? years. Wow. Two years, every day for two years. This story would not leave the press for a good year and a half. And that's because there was the inquest. There was, um, you know, my workplace issues when I was ready to move on. There was always an angle that mm. the press would work with that would keep this story alive. Yeah. And it just would not go away. And because it involved the royals, people just kept giving this story yeah. life. Oh, yeah. No, that's so tough. And how was like the, how were your family and your, everyone that around you during this time? Like how was the support or? Yeah, it was, I mean, I had to keep a lot of my friends separate and um, away from it all because of fear of 
the death threats towards mm. them as well. Right. You know, there were so many towards my mum. Someone rang the house and said, um, you know, eye for an eye, you deserve to die. Oh, wow. And so, and my mum was really sick at the time. So it wasn't a good situation. And your friends try and be there for you, but there's only one person in this world that knows what that situation is like, and that's me. No one will ever, doesn't matter how close they are to you, they'll never quite understand what it's like to go through something like that. That's huge. That's, I had honestly no idea that it was that bad because on TV, when we see it happening to a celebrity or whatever, yeah. we don't, we forget how you have real life emotions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's real life kind of things. And we, we do that with everybody, right? It's yeah. like, oh, that person's, that's not me. So we forget that they have feelings. Yeah. yeah. And you don't realize that you were going through the process of actually ending it. Mm. And going through the process of really contemplating suicide. Mm. And what was that? How was that fighting your demons on that level? Yeah, it, look, it was, it got to the, the point where I literally sat there and go, okay, is suicide for me? And I'm looking at myself going, well, how would I do it? Is, is that what I want? Do I actually, can I see myself doing that? And the answer was no. And from that moment, I chose life. So no matter what happened, even though it was freaking hard, yeah. I chose life in that moment. And when you choose life, you keep going. Even if it's one step at a time, you always find a way to just keep moving forward because it should never be the answer for anyone. Yeah. And I know how hard it is. I know how dark that space is. And you feel you're better off just doing it. Mm. But mm. look, when you get through it, life is amazing again. Yeah, exactly right. Do you ever have that ongoing anxiety afterwards? Uh, look, since the prank call, I'm like, okay, things will get better now. Yeah. Got divorced, can't have children. My mum passed away. Work has been, an, you know, a bit of a roller coaster nightmare for me since then. And you have all of this hardship still. And I'm like, how, why am I copying so much pain in my life? Mm. But you do, you just have to learn to deal with it and, and building that resilience. And that's what I've had to do. How did you build that resilience? Because it's, I think it's, I just love this kind of conversation because mm. a lot of people, we know it. Like we know that like when tough times come, yeah. you've got to move forward. Yeah. But you didn't, there's obviously strategies or something that you did yeah. to be able to put in place that resilience. Yeah. So what was like, how did you build that? You need to know what a step is. So when I say do one step at a time or move forward, it can be as simple as getting out of bed for the first time in four days and having a shower. Yeah. Mm. It can be reading a chapter of a book. Mm. It's always doing something that gets you that one step closer to regaining who you are. And let me tell you, when it comes to trolling and cyberbullying for two years, when you've read, go kill yourself, and every, mm. think of the most heinous things you can say to someone consistently for two years, now it means nothing to me. Right. I read that. I'm so <laughs> resilient because I've, there is nothing anyone can say to yeah, me that is worse than what I copped for two years. Yeah. So I've built the resilience to now <laughs> not... Like people can write what they want. They know to leave me alone now because I just block them. I, like I have no... I don't even read the full message. Just block them. That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. Bye, Bye Felicia. Bye, Bye Felicia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so once you started um, making those steps, what kind of other things did you start doing from that? Uh, I wanted to regain who I was, so I started looking into fitness more because I went on yeah. to medication as well and I'm like, okay, I want to get off medication and really try and regain who I was. And that's a tough process in itself, yeah. getting off the medication. You put on more weight, which is really unfair because it's like, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get better here, people. Why do you have to give me medication <laughs> that like makes it harder? So then I had to yeah, go through all of that. And I think the biggest thing is having something to look forward to. And at the time it was my wedding. That didn't work out too well, but at the time it was something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. So I think you always have to give yourself something to look forward to. Yeah. Um, and of course, me and my little Moodle, like oh. having someone around that just gives you constant love and attention. She doesn't care what, you know, what I do for a job or what I've been through. She just yeah. wants to love me. Yeah. So having that <laughs> companionship was life saving, honestly. It was, she's amazing. You can't have her. Yeah. <laughs> we can have split custody. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, honestly. So look, I want to move on from that whole kind of like the royal prank. I think because I think it's it was a massive life event for you. Yeah, yeah, it was. It doesn't define me, exactly. but it was a big part of my yeah, life. Exactly. So I get that. So I want to ask you, like, what has been outside of that kind of like episode? What's been some ongoing things that you've had to deal with or that you've really struggled with has been 
a tough part? Was it like, was it your, was it relationships? Was it friendships? Because your life has changed dramatically from when yeah. you were mm. 16, 26 to now. Yeah. Like, what has been the hardest kind of times for you and what was that like? Let's explore that. Well, I've been through some really tough times with losing my mum and, you know, my marriage falling apart as well. Um, those were really tough times. But I think the hardest thing is I did, I thought I rediscovered who I was, but I was with a partner at the time and it wasn't the true me. I still feel that I struggled to really work out my place and what I should be doing. Um, I couldn't do the early wake up calls with radio anymore. I was getting up at 3.20, so I quit 12 months ago to look for a new journey and and see what's next. And I just feel I'm still like this. Mm. I don't feel that I'm settled and I feel that I can get in these, just kind of get in a rut really easily where I stop the exercise. And this year especially, I've been really isolated from my friends. I've done that intentionally because I don't want them to deal with my drama all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's been empowering to sit there and work through it myself. But it's unsettling as well. I just, I feel I just want to be settled. Why did you make that decision to isolate yourself? I don't know. I think it just kind of happened. I just feel that there was drama after drama. There was just, and I'm like, my friends and my family have been through so much with my life so far. I don't want to keep being the one that's like, and I know they'll be there for me, but I'm like, is this something that I can sort through myself? I wasn't completely isolated, but I just chose to sometimes work through those situations myself. And I'm kind of glad I did because I feel great. Yeah. Do you wish you had, um, like told them that? Like, did you explain to them? Because that whole process of just like suddenly being around and then suddenly isolating yourself, like people from the external point of view are going to find it hard to understand. It's going to be like, what's yeah. actually going on here? Because it's very different in mm-hmm. a sense. Was that something that you ever explained or articulated to those around you to be like, look, I just need to do this. I need this time. Yeah. I need this to just recover. Yeah. Was that something you ever explained to them? I didn't, no. And I probably should have. Instead mm. of instead, I just pulled back, yeah. um, let them live their lives and find themselves, do their adventures. And I kind of just, yeah, just pulled back. So you're a founder now of Troll Free Day. Yes, and yeah. For those that don't know, can you explain what that day or what that is actually all about? Well, after the prank call and the trolling I went through, um, it got to a point where I started to build that resilience. And I'm like, holy shit, I am an adult. And this nearly really affected me and Mm. took me to a point where I contemplated taking my life. How would a young child deal with being told to go kill yourself? And the reality is they are killing themselves. It's the biggest killer of our young. So I created this one hour radio special. Um, I don't have the facilities to be able to do it at the moment, but I, it aired to a million people across Australia where it was talking to kids about bullying, getting the experts on um, and giving people the reality of what it's like. You mm. know, we weren't sugarcoating a lot of it. So mm. it's a day of awareness just to go try and be kind. Yeah. Think about what you're writing because a mum could be right, watching a real, like Amazing Race, watching you guys. Oh, I hate these guys. They're so stupid. Yeah. Their child is watching the parent behave like that and it's setting a trend so everybody needs to be accountable for it yeah 100% and you're not stupid I love you guys you're great (laughs) according to Noah a bit special (laughs) (laughs) word for word look you you did get lost and confused a lot of the time Uh, (laughs) he beat you that's true (laughs) (laughs) but but going on that I think that's a really really interesting point because when we're younger, we don't have the coping strategies to be mm-hmm. able to handle that. Yep. And oftentimes, even as adults, we don't have the coping strategies to be able to handle repetitive kind of, um, you know, defamatory kind of statements. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So with trolls, the impact that it has is a lot more significant than we actually think. Yes. Yes. When people say like, oh, they just ignore them. It's a lot different to ignore someone, you know, that you don't know. I mean, that's someone that you know just saying, oh, that was a bit stupid, compared to 50,000 people writing comments on your on your messages yeah. mm. or your entire school or what feels like the entire world yeah. Yeah. saying the exact same thing to you. Because yep. like you said, the moment that it's repeated from multiple sources, mm-hmm. multiple times, you start to believe it. Exactly. Yeah. And it's really important that we do build those strategies and we have that kind of opportunity to yeah. speak about that. We need resilience in kids. You know, yes. we, we need to teach resilience and kindness. Yes. And that's not something that they're taught. It's meant to be the parent's duty to do the best they can, but you're busy trying to keep your family together, trying to support them. You don't have time to sit down sometimes and teach them the resilience yeah. and the kindness. So there should be programs in all schools that do that. And I think phones should be banned from all classrooms. Mm-hmm. We don't need them in there. And it's, you know, they're about to do a test. They log on to Twitter 
and they see, oh, what do the kids use these days? I don't TikTok, think it's Twitter. TikTok, yeah, they could. Yeah. They could. And TikTok, TikTok, I don't know Instagram. if you can bully on TikTok. Snapchat, I know you can bully oh, on yeah. there. Yeah. <clears throat> they see something and then they're distracted before they've even done their test because they've got their phone there yeah. with them. Yeah. And I just think we need to ban them. Ooh. Uh, look, ooh, it's it, I mean, I, if they don't <laughs> ban my phone, I don't know. <laughs> I do get, but I get I, what you're I saying. I get the point what, what you're saying. I do think our phones have a lot of our benefit as well, but I think that... We need to teach people how, first and foremost, like I always say, I don't think that the phone is the issue. Mm. I think it's the people operating the phone. Yeah. And I feel like we haven't been taught empathy from a, from a, young, from a young age. That's yeah. right. And that's why we're de- but we, have, we make detrimental statements because we're not thinking about how we feel someone said that to me. Exactly. Mm-hmm. We're just saying yeah. it. And we're not I have concerned about the impacts because yeah. it's not me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't exactly. care. It's not me. Yeah. Yeah. And because we're taught that, we're taught mine. This is yours. This is about you. This is your shoe. This is your thing. And it's it's a very selfish culture. Mm. And we're never taught how to be more empathetic and think about other people. We don't we don't think about people when we make statements. Yeah. And when, yeah. we, and when, when we're treating people. So yeah. it's really, really it's really important. Yeah. It's a really powerful thing. That's it's only to get to that point where like something severe happens and we actually have that option to actually reflect and be like, oh shit, I shouldn't have said that. Mm. And it's like, why does it need to take me going to the extreme for you to realize that, you know, yeah. what we're saying and what's coming out of our mouth is just not, it's not acceptable. It just shouldn't that's happen. That's right. And there's a few people, yeah. a few lives that are ruined in that moment. The one that's been taken and the one that's now going to have to live with that for the rest of their exactly. life. Exactly. Exactly. And the families and everybody else mm-hmm. involved in it as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's a huge spiraling thing that we don't, recognize like even when i'm doing my assessments at work so i work at a clinic i'm a mental health assessment yeah nurse. so when we are, when we're doing a full assessment a really important component is the development of the person mm-hmm. so like how were you ever bullied were you ever have going through those things because you can be 45 and those the, those like mm. hurtful words are still translating to your yeah. behavior right now yeah and we don't ever think about that and the reason why we've got so many toxic kind of traits is because we haven't deal we haven't dealt with our pre existing issues. Yeah. Yes. That will happen from you know, yeah. yeah, shit comments being said to us. And a lot of people think, well, can I bring up something that happened 20 years ago? Is it really affecting me? Mm. And you don't realise that it actually is. And I remember when I was bullied at school, it was the old school way, and my reaction was to find someone else to bully because yeah. it felt like yeah. that was the chain reaction. And I'm ashamed of that. Like, But that's that was the reaction to what was going on. Mm-hmm. And that person bullying you was probably getting bullied by their parents. Yeah. yeah. That person's parents probably getting bullied by their boss. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's how it is because we're just so toxic in terms of our lack of care factor for yeah. other people. Yeah. And that's the whole point of this podcast is to shine hope, give positivity, make all those type of like really buzzwordy, airy fairy words like become a bit more tangible and realize yeah. it's really not lame to be nice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Is that yeah. not ridiculous that it's like, oh, he's a bit nice? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's like all the kindness is cool campaigns, and yeah. it's true. Yeah, exactly. Like, right. And I think we've got some celebrities in that space that are showing just that. You know, you've got your Chris Hemsworth. Yes, he's the hunky Thor, but he spreads a lot of those messages and shows those acts yeah. of kindness. So we need more people with profiles showing those acts of kindness as well. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Let's give us a profile. We just need a profile. Yeah, that's all we Have need. Have you just done a national TV show? <laughs> yeah, we need more. We're not <laughs> done. <laughs> I, don't a, I don't have a blue tick yet. You yeah, probably should have done more bikini shots. Yeah, you yeah. should look into that. Yeah, Tim and Rod didn't give us any tips. So, <laughs> <laughs> so now what would you say then, like, for people that are going through something similar, what would you say are some key tips and tricks that you would share or wish that you knew back in those times to help you overcome those challenges? Look, I think a lot of it is working through it yourself as Mm. well as the professionals don't rely on too many people to get you through a bad situation i know they say oh we should have support and but people might be dictating as to how you should feel how you should recover you really need to listen to yourself and you need to go through all the phases go through the grief go through the anger go through the pain you need to there's a reason why we have that range of emotions and you need to go through all of them you can't just go okay i'm going to put that up on the shelf 
yourself and ignore that and just move on with my life mm. like nothing's happened. Yeah. You have to deal with the bad shit in your life, but mm. you can move forward and find those ways to just go, okay, this is bad. It's going to take some time to get through, but I will get there yeah. one step at a time. I love no that. No one is in control of your grieving process. That's yeah. I love that. Mm. People love to tell you just get over it. Oh, no. I hate that. Yeah. Happiness yeah. is a choice. Yeah. It's not a choice. Don't yeah. say that. Like exactly. you can. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't like, th that's the thing about it is that people don't wake up intentionally to be feel like shit exactly. yeah like, you know, like why yeah to feel like this <laughs> yeah. yeah because people are so unaware and they don't actually understand what it's like or they're not empathetic yeah. mm. ding 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 we're not actually able to comprehend what they're going through yeah. and we force our timeline of our grieving process yeah. on them. yes so you've been talking about yeah. this for the last six weeks shut up yeah. i know and that's why when that's why i had the moment of isolation not because mm. of for that reason but i just felt that i'd already had enough drama that people yeah. have dealt with and i didn't want any of those responses oh well at least you've got this and blah 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 it's like well it's still shitty time for me yes. and i'll just deal with it myself yeah it wasn't too severe so i could do it yeah and to your other point i well i think it's so important that the point that you raised about you're going through your own journey because i think a lot of the times people like to share like oh well when i was going through this you know i overcame it by doing this or i didn't mm. feel like that at that time and then you start to second guess yeah. yourself you're like wow what's wrong with sure. me yeah that's why, why am i feeling yes. that way yes and or that's why, why you I shouldn't listen to the people like you want their support but you can't because it. it's your own journey it's your yeah. own recovery process and it's like there's no one else that can really go through it or understands it just unlike yourself so mm. i think that is spot on yeah and the that. same with mental health if mm. someone finally says i think there's something wrong with me don't be a doctor and tell yes. them what to do just yeah. listen to them just listen and yeah. that's all you need to do that is your role just listen yeah give them a platform to talk that, there's a philosopher i forgot who his name was but i said that like the mark of maturity is being able to hear a hear a thought hear an idea and not take immediate action on it. Mm. In terms of being able to hear what somebody says and be able to sit with it and see how it affects your life and then go from there, which is exactly what you're saying, right? It's like, mm. you can hear what people are saying around you and you can hear their advice or let them talk to you, yep. but doesn't you have to be in control of your own yes. journey yep. and Absolutely. your own recovery journey and yep. take responsibility for that. Yes. Because I feel like, do you feel like when you took responsibility for your own life and happiness that's when things time started to change yeah the moment i sat there and chose life, life. Yeah. and when i chose life i had to no matter what happened to me from that point i always go okay well you've chosen life great mm. so we're only going to go this way exactly. but i had to get to that point myself exactly. i had to hit the bottom and go okay i'm choosing life mm. and i think it's okay to get to rock bottom but please don't go down further. That's not the way out because there is something else for you out there, even though it might seem like it's so tough. You, it's impossible sometimes to see one meter in front of you, but there is, there's a mile in front of you and you don't know what's going to happen in two days time. So you just have to stick with it. That's amazing. I love that. Love mm. that. Some good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like, do you ever feel like, I know we're, we're wrapping up, but I'm just really enjoying this conversation. No, it's good, it's good. Can I steal some of your gin? Yeah, you, you've been eyeing it the whole time. I, I, was feeling, I was feeling uncomfortable. <laughs> it's your house, no? Mm. You yeah, I know, you gave it to me. <laughs> um, Honestly, like, I just feel that there's so much value in what you're saying. I just want to quickly unpack it yep. because it might, cut, it might go over a lot of people's heads, what you're actually saying. I think in simplicity, correct me if I'm wrong, it's just taking responsibility for what you're deciding to do. Yes. What, however long that takes to be able to make that decision to take responsibility of it, go through your grieving process. And once you make that decision to be able to go a direction, take the smallest of steps every single day. Yes. Yeah. Until you reach where you want to Absolutely. go. Absolutely. And you'll have, an, like I remember this one time where I'd, um, I was doing my little steps and I was feeling great and I had the best day. Mm. And I'm like, yes, you know, I'm feeling amazing. And I went to bed and I woke up and I was so depressed the next day for no reason. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, that's all right. The next day is a new day again. Yeah, honestly, no, honestly, I've loved talking to you. I think yeah. you have a lot oh, of wisdom. Thanks, guys. Um, and you've really said some stuff that can really, really resonate with all yeah. the people. Well, this is why people go, why do you talk about such a painful time? And it's because I've dealt with it all. Yeah. It doesn't hurt me to talk about it now. And I know that it's going to help other people. Mm. And I'm in a situation where 
not many other people will be in such a situation. Yeah. So, but the pain that I went through could still happen for someone else in a different situation. 100%. So it's that process of how you deal with it, how you build that resilience. Yeah. And if I can help one person listening this, then it's worth yeah. talking about it. I love that. And I think that's so powerful because you're literally like you're embodying what you've gone through and you're like a living proof that you can overcome it. Cause sometimes yeah. a lot of people don't see that hope. They don't see that no. light at the end of the tunnel, but you're living proof that it's there. Yeah. You just got to keep going. Like you said, you one do. step at a time. And sometimes bad things are still going to happen afterwards. Like I'm like, why am I still getting all these bad things in my yeah. life? But that set me up to be able to cope with getting through those things. Yeah, so it. it's not saying that bad things aren't still going to happen after you get through something like that, but you can get through it. Superwoman. <laughs> Honestly. Superwoman. I'll take Super it. <laughs> <laughs> now I love that. That's honestly like... Oh, unbelievable. And on that note, I think that we're going to probably wrap this yeah. lovely chat up um, with the amazing Miss Mel and the even more fabulous Mia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let her have that. She's good. No, this is, <laughs> this is great what you guys are doing. And it's been really like a comfortable place to talk. And I'm sure people listening feel comfortable in the space as well. Thank you so much. We yeah. really, really appreciate that. That's yeah. all we're trying to do is like, we always say that like this is not meant to be the the doctor's room or this isn't meant to be the mm. we're not here to diagnose anybody. Yeah. yeah. We're just trying to be like if you are going through the toughest times or whatever time, it's just a little bit more of an easier car ride to the doctors. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> it's <laughs> a little bit easier car ride. You should trademark that. Yeah. That's really good. Easier car ride to the doctors. <laughs> so it's a little bit easier though. Like you still need to go help get help if you need to go get help. Yeah. yeah. But Having the, a place that's a little more comfortable, a little more hopeful to talk about it yes. makes the journey a lot easier. Well, it's yeah. the first step that a lot of people are too scared to make. So hopefully, I mean, I don't know if you guys are going to do a little email thing, but maybe people can, you know, write in and... I think, was that old school? Is that what they did in the olden times? Yeah, that sounds pretty old school. I had an email. I was like, what are you talking about? You're going to sneak in front of me. Yeah. <laughs> you well. <laughs> Let's hit it with the rapid five, eh? But yeah, uh, since it's 2021, just on that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, set, leave a review, DM us, all that kind of stuff. Ah, uh, cool. Quickly, this is our end segment. Oh. Are you looking at me? What do I have to do? I have to eat something again? A lot. A lot, yeah. More than that. Okay. Nah, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked a lot about you and we talked a lot about your story, but we didn't get to know the real Mel. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be super quick, five rapid fire questions that allow us to, um, you know, understand you and... Know you a bit more personally. So, one one word, one sentence, really Boom. short. Okay. Okay. Sorry, so, Siri, it wasn't for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mel, tell us, what's your favourite movie? Um, Armageddon. I don't know why I just thought of that. I know. It's, do you even know what that is? Mm. Well, no, I don't. I don't watch it make, guess what it's Okay, fine, Bad Boys. No, stick with no, it. No, stick with it. You already said it. Don't try to take it back now. <laughs> That's it. You already said it. I don't know what I came to. You know why. You were watching it yesterday. Not <laughs> What's your favorite travel destination? Hawaii. Ooh. Have you been? Yeah, six times. Oh. I mean, I don't want to show up, but I'm old. And, <laughs> and what is the most important thing in your life item-wise? So Mia. Can't, can't be a person. Can't be... Oh. Mia. Mm. Nah, yeah, we'll Mia, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll give you Mia. <laughs> and what's the most attractive quality in someone? Honesty. Hmm? Oh, no, shit. Nick's like, <laughs> like, like, like Yo, man, I've been going through a lot of stuff. Yeah, like I know, that. I know. <laughs> Life's so hard right honest. now. <laughs> My biggest weakness is I'm so honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. Um, and last one, what is your number one tip slash advice for life? Um, always stay true to yourself and you'll never fail. Oh, love that. <laughs> <laughs> Sound bite. <laughs> no, that was honestly one of my favorite podcasts. Oh, yeah. right? Like, it was so good. Like, we got to here. talk about some real stuff. Yeah. We got, <laughs> no, I, I had a lot of laughs, you know, go to see, eat. Mm, wasn't the chilly one, but you know. Whatever. Yeah, you finessed us, well, and we, and we learned put from that. Fake sauce on it for next time, because you got a plain chicken wing and you got two smothered. This is what that happens. This is what happens when I leave. It, this is what happens when I leave this with Femi. No, that one That's Femi, sauce. you made a mistake. No, no, it Femi barely had any but sauce. That one had red sauce, so it could be. <laughs> it was the sauce from Gibbs and Burgers, but yeah, anyways, I know that. I, I saw the order. Uh, no, it's been uh, great. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks so much for having us. Thanks, thanks for coming to my house. Like I really, really appreciate you taking the time to travel. Just randomly has a photo. 
because Mel's my obsession. <laughs> so if you're listening to this, there's a big photo of Mel and Mel on the wall at apparently Nick's house. It's all right. <laughs> Just message me and I'll explain. <laughs> but honestly, like, thank you so much for coming and, and really sharing your story and being so bold and vulnerable. Like, Always. really appreciate it. And I think a lot of people are going to really resonate and learn from that. And for people listening, like if you learned something from this or it was valuable or you got some questions, like, I mean, don't hesitate to firstly leave a review and write us an email because we will probably not check it. So <laughs> I'll check the email. Friendly doesn't check the email, so I won't be checked. But DM us, DM us on Instagram or leave a review on Spotify and like, we'd love to hear. And I'm sure Mel is always hoping to get in some messages. Yeah. On Instagram. <laughs> She's probably like, oh shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nah. So where can people find you, Mel? Here in my house. <laughs> probably don't want people getting wow. me here. <laughs> no, I'm on I'm on Instagram at Mel Greg underscore. And if people want to get involved in Troll Free Day, what can they do? Well, I need to work out if I'm doing it next year because I don't have the radio platform, but I could be in radio again next year. You never know. Okay. Stay knows? tuned. Who knows? Stay tuned. Who knows? If this blows up, you can join our podcast. Do you get paid? Yeah, yeah. Do you get paid? <laughs> we don't even get paid. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast was getting a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> nah, honestly, like, it's been awesome. This has been another great episode of the Uncovered cool. Podcast with Nick and Femi. Yes, and sir. I'm looking forward to next week's one. Uh, next week's one's going to be a really, really spicy one. Really, really, intru- really interesting, actually. Yeah, so, for sure. Uh, make sure you guys look, uh, I don't know, like, subscribe. I don't know, like, like, like our, subscribe to our, you? subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, like you can us. subscribe to podcast as well, so you don't miss an episode. And yes. um, give us five stars. Yes, do that. Do that. <laughs> yeah. Whatever gets us paid. <laughs> <laughs>